and welcome to Coffee Break Blogging, where you'll learn to grow and monetize your blog in short, tactical installments you can use right away. Now here's the next episode in our series. Hello there, David Risley here with another episode of Coffee Break Blogging, episode 125. It's amazing how these episode numbers just stack up so quickly. Um, so today we're going to talk about shopping carts and how to go about choosing a shopping cart. Now, in the, in the previous episode, we talked about how to accept credit cards in your blog, definitely something that's going to be very important if you want to make any sales. But the, the other component of that that's you're going to need to look into is the shopping cart system, which is the software that actually your, your, your visitors are going to see when they try to go buy something is, you know, your checkout pages and all that type of stuff. And the software that actually interfaces with the whole credit card system and makes it all work. This is your shopping cart system. And so we need to talk about that and how to go about actually selecting one of these bad boys. Okay. And we're going to go over a lot of different options today. Uh, and I'm not going to go over them in a ton of detail because you're smart. You can go check out their website, which will be in the show notes, by the way, we'll put all the links there. Uh, you can go and look at these things. Um, and I'm just going to kind of walk you through some of the options. Okay. So the first question that we need to ask is, do you need an actual shopping cart? Okay. Now shopping cart, the word shopping cart is kind of a vague term. Okay. Now, but it, it does delineate down into a couple of different categories. You've got the type of shopping cart that's that us information marketers typically use. Now, if you look at information marketing, you know, if you're selling a course or an ebook or something like that, typically you're, you're the person's buying one thing at a time and they might have some upsells and that type of thing. But essentially it's a pretty linear transaction. The person reads a page or they watch a video and they say, yep, I want to buy that. They click the button that says add to cart and then they begin the checkout process to buy that thing, okay? Now, the other type of shopping cart is the one where you literally have a real shopping cart, where you add the cart, you can add multiple items to that cart, and you can check out and buy everything collectively. Now, those are two different kinds of systems, uh, especially, and you need to look into this and look into what your intentions are going to be. Typically speaking, the multiple item style of shopping cart is really only going to be applicable if you're in the e-commerce business, if you're selling physical goods and that type of thing. You know, think something along the lines of Amazon, where you can buy or, or uh, add multiple items to your cart and then buy all of them on one transaction. You know, if you're not in that type of business, you don't need the style of shopping cart that's designed to do all that. You know, you don't need uh, uh, the type of shopping cart where they're going to look at an ebook and then go add to cart. Then there's an option to go continue shopping and add a bunch of other things to their cart because people don't really do that when it comes to courses. We're not, you know, that's just not the way it works. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about the e commerce side because, generally speaking, I don't train people to set up e-commerce sites just beyond the scope of the blog marketing academy so the rest of what i'm going to talk about here is going to be applying primarily if you're selling digital products okay and there's a uh, three different ways to go here the first one is going to primarily apply to you if you're selling single downloadable products and if you don't have a heck of a lot of a lot of things to sell okay now these are outsourced solutions which means that you're basically hiring these companies to not only process the order for you but generally speaking they're also going to deliver it to you as, uh, as well. So if you get confused by, you know, how do you deliver the ebook to somebody when they buy it? Um, you know, do you set up a secure site? Do, you know, how do you handle logins and all that stuff? It, like if, if the mechanics of all that just make you go cross-eyed, well, that's where these types of companies come in. Now, these types of companies are, would be the likes of Gumroad, there's a company called Payloads, which is just the payload, and then it ends with a Z. So payloads with a Z.com. I've never used that company, by the way, uh, but it, they, that's what they do. They sell digital deliver, digital goods. Uh, then another one is eJunkie. Uh, there's ClickBank.com. Some of these guys, and they're, they're what they are are outsourced 
delivery mechanisms where they process the order. They, in many cases, will deal with the customer support stuff for you. Um, not like answering specific questions, but if a person wants a refund or something, those companies will just do it. Um, and they handle the delivery in a, in a secure fashion to the people who buy it. Now, in exchange for offloading all of that hassle onto them, you're going to pay more, okay? You will pay more with those companies than you would if you were processing the transaction in-house. It's because you're paying that extra for all the other services that they are providing. I mean, they're delivering the thing to them and they're handling a lot of the back end stuff. So from your perspective on your site, all you're going to need is, you know, a sales page, and then a link to the, you know, a buy button link. And then it goes off into these people's companies like Gumroad or eJunkie or Payloads or ClickBank or what have you. And they take care of everything over there. Okay. And so you're paying extra for that. Uh, I think with ClickBank, it's been, a, I haven't used ClickBank in years, but I want to say you're paying like seven to 8% of transaction to the whole thing. Uh, payloads, I think, has a flat monthly rate plus a percentage of transaction. Gumroad, I think, is just percentage of transaction, but it's it's higher than a, than a typical credit card. I mean, you're, I think it's more like about 5%. Uh, so you're going to pay more for these, but they're convenient. And they are good options if you're in a situation where you don't have a lot of products to sell. Let's say you just got one ebook right now uh, or maybe one online course, and that's kind of your main gig. You don't need a lot of upsells or any of this fancy stuff. Go check out some of these companes like Gumroad or eJunkie. I, I, I'm not a, I don't like eJunkie a heck of a lot, but Gumroad is nice and clean. They've got a really simple checkout process, and it makes selling things pretty darn simple, okay? Let's move on to the next option. This is definitely going to be beefier and will not apply to everybody listening right now uh, because these are the shopping carts that are, are great for selling information products, but they also come with a, with a more significant cost. They're generally designed to run higher volume and things like that. Okay. So these are good for high volume people who are making, you know, many different transactions. Generally speaking, they're going to have m multiple things in their product line because most of these options have the ability to do one click upsells where they buy one product and then you say, Hey, you want to add this to it? You, you know, blah, blah, blah. In order to do stuff like that, you then you need to have other things to sell. You can't be a one trick pony. And so if you're going to, if you're a more developed business, these types of cards can make a lot of sense. The other good thing about these is that they do allow you to offload that responsibility, just like Gumroad or eJunkie or these guys who take care of a lot of that back end stuff. It's the same with these hosted shopping cart systems where they, they take, uh, they take care of the secure transaction as far as, you know, putting the, the security, in, in, in place so the credit card transactions are secure. They take place of the checkout uh, pages. They've got all that set up for you. So it's, it's a lot more hands-off. It's a lot simpler to, uh, to use these things because they're taking care of a lot of that grunt work for you. Um, okay. Oh, typically also with these shopping cart systems is that they also have transaction management built in. So if you want to go and refund somebody, you log into the shopping cart, you take care of that. You can see people's transaction history. Um, all that back end stuff is all dealt with by these hosting hosted shopping carts. Now let's name off a few to kind of give you an idea what I'm talking about. Um, there's the, the, there's those that are attached to a CRM, which is a customer relationship manager. In other words, a big email list that's got tagging and all that. And those, the two big ones are Infusionsoft and Entreport. Entreport are the guys that I use. Infusionsoft is a very popular company. Both of these companies, they've got your email list and all the database capabilities that go along with that. But on top of that, they will also process transactions. So if you know somebody comes and they buy, that you can process the transaction and everything right through Entreport. Uh, and the, the email so it all goes into Entreport. You get all the marketing our automation capability. And the, the, this, it's a real powerful combo. But but because these systems are not cheap at all, you need to have a business of a certain caliber before you probably want to buy something like that. Okay. So it's not necessary for most of us, but those are two different options in FusionSoft and Entreport. Another one that I have used before is called Nanacast. Now, Nanacast is actually a really nice shopping cart, you know, but, I'll, but, but with a caveat. Last time when I was using it, 
the design of it wasn't that great. It looked like it was built in the 90s. Okay, uh, and it might, as for all practical purposes, it might be that way now. They might not have made it any better. Okay, that being said, it's one of the most flexible and powerful shopping carts that I've used in a long time. It's a really nice shopping cart. You just have to get around the fact that when you're actually using it, it's not that pretty. Okay, so that's nanacast.com. Really nice. Uh, I, I was paying $99 a month to use it. So it's not cheap, but it's not as expensive as Infusionsoft or, um, or Entreport. Uh, but it doesn't have any email capabilities or any of that. It's strictly for handling transactions, uh, processing transactions securely, that type of thing. Okay, another one that's really popular is called One Shopping Cart. That's the number one shoppingcart.com. Um, very well known. I think the company's web.com. So it's a big company that's behind this. And um, and many people use them and it gets along just fine. I think one shopping cart, you can actually do the other style of shopping cart where they actually add multiple items to cart in the whole nine yards. It's just that most of us are probably not going to be doing that. A competitor of one shopping cart is called Premium Web Cart. Has a lot of nice features. I've not used them personally, but I know that when I was personally shopping around, I was checking these guys out. So you might check out Premium Web Cart. I think it's just premiumwebcart.com. And another one that's getting a, more popular is called Samcart, samcart.com. Now, this, this is set up by people who are very familiar with information marketing. They've got beautiful one-click upsell capability um, and a lot of really cool stuff. And I've, I've heard there's a lot of power with Samcart, but I have not used it personally. And there are a ton of other ones out there. This is just to name a few. But the whole idea here is that you're offloading the responsibility for having a smooth checkout process to these companies. Okay, so if you want to just basically let somebody else deal with it, that's where these hosted shopping carts come in. Okay, now I want to talk about one other option, and it goes along with the episodes that we've been talking about here in Coffee Break Blogging for the last few, specifically membership sites. Okay, now why do I mention membership sites as a shopping cart? Well, when you get right down to it, that's kind of what they are. Okay, now if you go back to episode 122, where we talked about six reasons why you should create a membership site, one of the points that I made there was that you can sell anything essentially via a membership site platform, especially if we're talking about digital. And that even if you're selling an ebook or something, you can sell it via digital a membership site platform. And in fact, you might even want to explore not delivering it as an ebook, but deliver it as a small mini course instead protected by your membership site software. And so if you're in the information business, it makes a lot of sense in my mind to not use some third party shopping cart system like we've just talked about, but to actually do it as a membership where they get an account on your website and then anything they buy from you automatically gets added to that account. It just seems nice and clean to me, okay? Now, the other thing is that with these systems, it's a little bit more do-it-yourself. It's still pretty simple, but it isn't as if you are, are, are throwing all responsibility off onto another company and therefore paying them monthly for that privilege. With a membership site platform, especially in the context of WordPress, which is what most of us are using, you control it because it's tied right to your blog. So these people never leave your blog. They're not going to some third-party checkout page in most cases. They're going to stay on your site. And they buy anything via your shopping cart system, which is actually your membership site. Okay? Now, to name off a few options here, I'm going to start off with Member Mouse because I'm a huge fan of Member Mouse. And this is, a, this is actually what the Blog Marketing Academy is built on top of. Now, with Member Mouse, I can sell any one-off product I want. I can sell any membership. I can sell any damn thing I want. And it's all through my own checkout process, customized for the Blog Marketing Academy. And it's all right there on my website. So I control the entire experience. I'm not offloading them onto somebody else's checkout page. Now, the, the flip side of that is that, of course, I am responsible for that checkout process. I'm responsible for what it looks like. 
I'm responsible for, for providing security for it. Now, the security is easy, actually. I, I, I host with WP Engine, um, and I just go and I buy what's called an SSL certificate, Secure Socket Layer Certificate from them. It's easy. All web hosts sell these things, um, and, you, and they'll hook it up for you, too. So all that means is that you can have any page on your site be secure just by turning the URL into HTTPS rather than HTTP. Okay. And so that's the way I do it. When I send people into my checkout page, that page is designed to be secured, which means that any information that people provide on that page is going to be sent securely. And then my system is integrated with Stripe for credit card and all that information gets securely communicated with Stripe. In fact, my servers never even see anybody's credit card information. It goes directly to Stripe and Stripe maintains all security for that. And, but I control the entire checkout process this way. And that's with member mouse. I could sell an ebook that way if I wanted to. I could sell any membership I want in any format. I could sell any one off product I want of any price point, And I can do it all in member mouse. And the beauty of it is that I can provide that one global account that anything that they buy from my company appears under that, that account, which is just easy. It's just easy for people. Okay. Now a few other options, wishlist member, very popular out there for memberships. And you can do the same thing. And I believe it integrates with Stripe now, integrates with several others, and you could sell one off or recurring. I mean, you could sell anything you want essentially with wishlist member, uh, digital access pass is another one. Member press is another one. There's a lot of these out there. And this happens to be the way that I prefer to set up a, a checkout or a shopping cart, quote unquote, system on my site is to do it using a membership site platform, okay? With member mouse specifically, if you want to be able to do one-click upsells like the fancy guys like Nanocast and Sam Cart and these guys will do, then member mouse allows you to do that. You could do one-click upsells and it's beautiful. It works just as well as those big hosted systems. And that's with member mouse, which is what I use in my business. So that's basically the lay of the land in terms of shopping carts, okay? I don't want you to get that confused by it. There are a lot of options out there because, you know, any, any anything out there in the internet that every business is going to need, you're going to have a lot of people trying to provide it, you know? So you go out there to look for shopping carts and you're going to find a ton of them, an absolute ton of them. So what you need to do is evaluate it from what are your needs? What are your needs? If you're going to just be selling one thing, or maybe two things, and you're not looking to do upsells and stuff like that, you don't want to deal with the mechanics of delivering things to people securely, go check out some of these simple ones like Gumroad or, uh, or eJunkie or even ClickBank if you want, okay? If you're running more volume and you want to have more complicated upsell sequences and all that kind of stuff, check out one of these hosted shopping carts like this kind that we've talked about. The price points vary. And, and you know, you're going to probably want to run some volume before you're going to want to pay that monthly expense, but you get what you pay for. But if you want the infinite flexibility, then check out one of these membership site platforms. And I would highly encourage you to check out Member Mouse specifically. And it's only because it's got that really nice one click upsell capability that a lot of the other membership systems just don't have. Okay. Um, and, uh, and, and Member Mouse is just clean. Like it gives you the same kind of capabilities in many cases as these more expensive hosted shopping carts, but you can do it all in house on your own site. Okay. All right, so there you go. Hopefully you found that valuable. Hopefully I provided a little bit of clarity there on shopping carts. And the next episode, we're going to jump right back into the, the dedicated membership site theme. Where we're going to be talking about how to deliver on a recurring membership. Okay, so I'll see you then. Thanks for listening to this episode of Coffee Break Blogging. If you like what you heard here today, we have something awesome we'd love to send you. It's called the Blog Conversion Guide, and it has nine tweaks you can make to your blog in order to increase your conversion rate to get more opt-ins and sales. As one of our listeners, we'd love to give you access to this guide absolutely free. You can get your copy right now by going to coffeebreakblogging.com. Again, go to coffeebreakblogging.com to get your copy, and we'll see you next time.